Monads. Conference without monads, right? So monads are asking the right question. And if we think about monads and they're asked the right question to ask, well, there's actually only one. What is a monad? <laughs> and, you know, monads, um, there is a problem with monads. They, they come with a curse. And the curse is like, once you actually understand what they are, you lose completely ability to uh, explain it to other people. <laughs> and so, you know, if, 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 if there's one thing that you can take from this talk, so if you go to your next job interview and they ask you what a monad is, you just answer, I know what it is, but I have, uh, oh, I have absolutely no idea how to explain it to you. So that's a job guarantee. Just give me a second. Uh, technical issues. All right. So the curse. Um, yeah, and I've recently, I recently learned what monads are, and I was like, ah, come on, I can explain it, right? Curse. I'll manage. So I applied for this conference. Yeah, they, they, they took me in. Awesome. And then two weeks ago, I learned I have 30 minutes for it. So I guess, no, <laughs> it ain't going to happen. <laughs> Impossible. And I, I think I have only 20 minutes, so even though. All right, so back to this question. I mean, we can wonder, like, why, uh, why even we are asking this question? Why even we bother what, what monads are? So the origin, or origins of these questions come from, like, every company out there in the world doing functional programming. So this is Jim. Jim is a junior developer. He comes to this new work. He's excited. He's going to do Haskell. And, you know, yeah, it's going to be cool. And he enters the room of senior developers. This is Jack, senior developer, Pascal, <laughs> senior developer. And Jim is like, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't read all the cool books about Haskell that you gave me, but I quickly go through some tutorials on the internet, and I, I think I know semantics of Haskell. I, I want to do this you know, first, first program. I want to do Hello World. So, so yeah, how, how do I print stuff to, to the console? And Jack is like, you know, use IO Monad. <laughs> and Jim is like, <laughs> so we are, we are the, I mean, the origins of the questions are probably like that every single time. So, so if you're Jack, don't be that guy. <laughs> I mean, okay, so, the, so quickly, if, if you are that guy, just imagine, so you guys can you imagine like, uh, if you have a junior developer and he, they come, the, the junior developer comes to you and asks you, all right, I can read about, a one, about one value, but hmm, do we have some kind of construct that we could, could example, reason about many values altogether. Your answer isn't used list monad. You're saying use list or collection or sequence. Even though list is a monad, you don't necessarily have to tell it's a monad, right? But I will come to that later. All right, so if you go to the websites about monads and tutorials, you will learn that monads are burritos, astronaut suits, elephants, different kind of different things. I'm not going to do that, hopefully. Um, you can also learn about monads when you apply some knowledge from math. Well, but that depends on what kind of background you come from, right? Because if you know category theory and if you know end of factors and things like that, then this is it. You can go home right now because that explanation over here should be just enough. For other guys, just stay and uh, we will continue. All right. so. I will try to explain you guys what monads start based on like four, four assumptions. The first assumption is like we as developers, we understand code. That's my first assumption. The second one is that it is easier for us to somehow reason about related ideas and that having like understanding those related ideas, then we can go with an abstraction over it. And having that abstraction, we can create metaphors. Like, this is where burritos come from, like at this point, burritos. Um, and having the abstractions and having the metaphors, when we can formalize. If you go from the mathematical, if you have a degree in mathematics, then probably this list is also okay, but you go from this point to the third, to the second, to the first, like, you have to reverse the list. All right, so let's do this. Code and related ideas. Do you guys know this series, like sitcom? Yeah, awesome sitcom, I love it. Haven't, didn't have time to look at the last season, but whatever. So imagine that 
Imagine that we are, we are living in this world of Big Bang Theory, and you know, we, we only are undergraduates, so we, uh, after, after university, we just created a startup, and we're gonna you know, earn, earn a lot of money doing software, and we came up, up with this idea that we're gonna do an application uh, for mobile devices, Android, iOS, and for the 10 users out there, also for Windows Phone. <laughs> it's gonna allow us to quickly find out where our partners are, like my girlfriend or my wife, and, and so on. So it's a simple implementation over here. And imagine that we have a geek, geek has a name, he also has a partner, and he works at some place. And the workplace has a name, and the address like a street. And are we, do we have to implement our main business logic, so partner lookup method, which takes a geek, and implementation is straightforward. We take the partner, we take the workplace, and we return the street. So imagine that we have a cheesecake factory, we have a university, there's Penny and Leonard, the way that Penny works at Cheesecake Factory, Leonard works at the university. They write now all together, and if we call this method and print out the results, we will learn that Leonard can find her girl at the Cheesecake Factory, and Penny can find Leonard at Academic Street 10. Cool, right? It's been like, what, two minutes? We are started, we have to deploy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we go to production, right? And, and results are outstanding, like, yeah, it works. But apparently, there's this one guy over here, Rajesh. <laughs> and he's like, this application sucks. And we try to wonder why. And we ask our domain experts about it, and they're telling us that we're, from time to time, there are geeks without partners. So, uh, well, they might have dog, but I don't know how it is in the U.S., but in Poland, that's illegal, so. Um, <laughs> so we have, we have university, we have Rajesh, and we call the partner lookup method, and we have an exception. <laughs> so that sucks. Uh, we try to re-implement that quickly and to deploy as fast as possible. Probably error somewhere here. Let's try to re-implement that. So we create a new method partner lookup, which takes a geek, we, we check if it's a null, and if a partner is null, and you know, we, we're slowly building this pyramid of doom, right? <laughs> yeah, and if we have the result, we just return it. With, without result, we are saying not found. Let's quickly check if it works. It works, yay! So we go to production, but we feel that we made something wrong here. Like, I feel dirty at this moment, right? <laughs> because I, I don't know how you guys, I wouldn't lo like to work this kind of code. So um, we come up with a new idea, a maybe type. So maybe as a type, it's parameterized by A. Uh, it has two uh, different like extensions. So we have sum, which will basically wrap our value A. And we also have a num, which, well, simply is nothing. Um, and we have, a, we have a method to lift any value A into our maybe type, all right? And, and we have at this point one method here in our trait, which will be called and then. And and then is a method that takes a function, and that function takes as a parameter our A, and returns a new maybe with type B. And we return that maybe B over here. So let's see how that could be implemented. So for sum, if we want to implement a dot signature, all we have to do is we have to lift this value over here with, with our method f, and whatever is returned by, the, by this method, by this function f, we just return. Simple as that. For none, basically we don't have any value to, to run our function f over here, so we just return ourselves. Is that something like you guys understand? Can I go on? Yeah, all right, awesome. So having that, we can now implement our partner lookup method one more time. So we take our geek partner, and we are calling and then method on it. So, uh, so we're taking a, we're taking a partner from. Uh, if, so, sorry. So if the value exists, we'll take work workplace, and having that workplace, uh, we will take street and return it. So, uh, and that val that whatever that is returned over here will pattern match. If we have street, we will t return that street 
and if it's a num, we will simply say it's, it's a num, uh, not, not found, we, we don't have any result. So if we call that method one more time, the results are correct and we are happy. However, if we look at, at this method right now, um, I might argue that if we, if we try to compare it to our previous implementation, the naive implementation, this one is like very verbose, like around a, a, a lot of ceremony around it. We are really doing this thing and all that we have to somehow, you know, it's there, we know it, but we try to ignore it. So my question is, can we write a little bit different uh, so it might be a little bit readable? So um, my first idea would be to simply, instead of doing pattern matching over here and returning a string, we could actually return a maybe type as well. So because some, some person that will be working with our method might not be still interested in, in, the, in the value, it might be still uh, using other maybe types and, and be doing other and then methods over here. The other thing that we could also do is called something, and well, it's called, it's called for comprehension. I think it's in Haskell it's called uh, do notation or something like that. But the basic idea is it's a syntactic, it's a syntactic sugar over, over this code over here. So the syntactic sugar looks like this. It goes with a little bit of magic. I will later tell you all why, but just for, for the time being, just ignore it. Um, so this, this notation over here, it's simply by the compiler, it's reconstructed to, uh, to that over here. It, it, it's done on the compile time. So, but, but basically, it's like exactly the same code if you look at it. So we take our, we take our uh, geek and we take his partner, and if that exists, uh, we look for the workplace, and if that exists, we take the street, and that value is then again wrapped over the, our, our maybe type, and which is then, then returned. So I don't know how, how you guys feel about it, but once you get used to this notation, it's, it's, it's from my point at least, it's, it's more readable because I actually I can read line by line and understand what is happening. All right, so the last question that we might ask ourselves is like, how could I right now print my value over here? I mean, this returns some cake street one, how can I print it? So we might add a new additional method we will call within. So that method takes a function which takes our A and returns a B. So in other terms, we are, in other words, we are simply we are giving ability to reuse existing functions that we have in, within language or in, within the libraries, like println. So the implementation in sum would be like, uh, you know, just take this, this f function, apply it to value, and then lift it to maybe. And then again, implementation for, for none would be, will be, well, nothing. And so how we can print it out? Well, we just simply go with, within with our function println, and that's basically it. All right, we have to expand our market, so we go to pirates. <laughs> and pirates, they have a problem. Uh, it's, it's something I'm familiar with. with, with. Uh, I have the same problem like from time to time. The question is why the rum is always gone, the, the lack of alcohol, right? <laughs> so we will try to create another application for, for pirates to keep track of the amount of rum that they have on their ships. Um, so imagine that we have our pirate, our pirate has a name, and he, he has many ships over here, some kind of type that you, the definition you will see in a moment. The ship has a name and a hold, in a hold there are barrels, many barrels, and a barrel that keeps amount of rum uh, within it. So there's our Captain Jack Sparrow, has the two ships, Black Pearl and White Pearl, uh, and both of them with holds. One is already empty, wonder why? And the other one still has some alcohol in it. So if I would like, so okay, so trait, uh, we will create trait many, as I said, with const, and const is defined as a head, the first value, and the rest of the, of, uh, of, like, of the, of the many object. Um, and the same, we, can, we need to create uh, information that there's no more any elements, which we'll call empty. So, if we want to lift like some number of elements into our type many, this is how we will do it. Um, and, and then method at within are implemented, implemented quite easily. So if we go into within method, well, that's just quite straightforward. We take our, our function f, we apply it to the head of our many object, 
and then we recursively call within with, a, with the same function f to the tail of our many object. If we have look at the and then method, well, it's pretty similar, but the values are both of those will, will return uh, many, so we need to have some way of co concatenating those two together. There's implementation, uh, it's, a, it's a detail at this point, so the implementation is on the GitHub if, any, if anyone is interested. All right, so having that, we have to implement the empty, but it's empty, so it's always straightforward. And let's see how we can right now provide our functionality to our new application. So we take a jack and its ships, and for, for each ship, we will call ship, hold, and take a barrel, and having barrel, we'll take, we will just simply call method barrel amount, which will, uh, th and again, this, this syntax over here can be rewritten using for comprehension, as again, we, uh, this is exactly the same semantics, just written a little bit differently. So ships, holds, barrels, barrels, amount. And we have our value, which is like this. Now we can reduce it and, and have the, the final amount of RAM for the given pirate. All right. If you look at it, because I don't know how much time do I have left. Oh, that's my watch. Not that many, all right. So if we look at it, then suddenly there's some pattern that we can see. Um, and the pattern is, we, we've seen two wrapping classes. Uh, all have the and then method, and each take a function that can be called on value, wrap around it, which can be empty or can be multiple instances of it, and so on. As I, as I can think, both of those were examples of a monad. So, and yet again, the question, what is a monad? So monad is a box, it's a container. It takes a value and, and, wrap it, and, and wraps that value over it. Um, <laughs> box has a common interface which allows us to do one thing and one thing only, connect sequence of operations over the context or content, content of that box. And, and then method simply means do the next thing. However, what the next thing means depends on the implementation of a monad. So we might be calling the method for existing value, we might not be calling it at all if there's no such value, or we might be calling it multiple times uh, on the multiple objects that are being wrapped. All right, so having that, and a new metaphor created after burritos, we can formalize. So monad is an abstract data type. That, that's simply what it is. It has two operations and then a unit. You might be saying we haven't seen a unit, but you actually did, so whenever we were doing lifting, we were actually calling a method like called unit, if you, if you look at the papers and, and blocks and the web. So if you look at the internet, this method is actually not called and then, but it's called bind, and if you come from Scala, you will actually use method, they, they called it flat map for whatever reasons, I don't know, um, but, uh, so that was just a little bit of magic. So to have full comprehension in Scala, uh, you cannot call your, me your methods in Monad uh, bind or and then or whatever. You have to, has to have to call it map. So that magic over here was simply uh, transforming uh, and, and then method to flat map and within to map, and that's simply it. So if we were using name, name convention flat map instead of and then, then we could simply uh, remove the magic and this code would still be working. All right, so monad is a abstract data type. It has two methods, bind and unit, and there are some laws around those methods. So the first two laws, left identity and right identity, well, they simply saying that unit method should be act as a natural, a natural function over the values. In other words, if you, if you put a value and you create a monad using this unit method, this unit method shouldn't damage the value that you put into the box. That's simply it. And the mathematical, math, mathematical rules are over here. The other rule, associativity, is like binding two functions in succession is the same as binding one function that came as to be determined, determined from, from them. So it's yet another, another loss, mathematics. Um, I don't have time to go into them. If you guys are interested, maybe you can later on ask questions because as I said, we have, to, we have to live without formalism with this talk. 
Um, so all right, so uh, I hopefully uh, answered the questions. I'm like four minutes after my time, but um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. My, my name is Pavel Schulz. I, I have a blog, a uh, tweet. Uh, if you have questions, I'll be somewhere around coffee machine because in Poland right now it's 11 p.m. So I will be sleeping right now. Uh, but no, I will be also drinking beer. So if you have any more questions, then being drunk, I can be more open and, you know. Um, and the last thing, I, I would like to really thank the, this company over here. It's a company run by my colleague of mine. Uh, they simply paid like half of the uh, travel expenses to get me here. So yeah, cool. All right, thank you very much.